Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, and I have not done a LOL commentary in ages, so I thought I'd do one. LOL commentary is a pain in the ass to do, by the way. One, you need a good game, and two, I've got to disable my network adapter in order to load LOL replays. I'm so waiting for that replay system to come. Unofficial LOL replay tool will do for the time being. Now, this is going to be a commentary centered around the idea of support, and specifically around a support and AD carry bottom combo lane. I'm going to be playing Tarek and Amar, a member of my fixed team, is going to be playing Caitlyn. Now, we queued as a duo ranked, which is always a good idea. If you're having real problems with your solo ELO, for instance, I would strongly recommend that you start queuing duo with a friend. Get a good combination together. Get some good synergy going. Use voice communication. That's a good way to start climbing out of ELO hell. I've been in ELO hell for quite some time, and I've decided... Solo rank just is a bad idea, and I should be doing pretty much anything. And we've started doing this combo right here, the Caitlyn and Tarek bottom lane combo. Caitlyn and Tarek bottom lane around this ELO is really good because neither Caitlyn nor Tarek gets picked or banned all that often. Yes, Caitlyn can get picked quite a lot, but usually when you queue, especially since between the two of us, there's actually quite a large ELO gap. For instance, my solo ELO is really bad. My team ELO is better, but my solo ELO is awful. Whereas Amar's solo ELO is much higher. So what usually happens is if we both queue, then Amar will be team captain. So the chances are he is getting Caitlyn first. Most likely. It's not the worst thing if he doesn't. We, you can pick something else. You can do Ash, Tarek. It's not quite as good. You could do Ash. Well, you could do Vayne, Tarek. And of course, there's the option of going anything and Sona. Personally, I prefer Tarek. Sona's good, no doubt about that. Sona, really, really great support. But Tarek does have one thing going for him that's really awesome, which is, of course, Dazzle. Dazzle, an incredibly powerful single target stun. He can also do quite a bit of damage, and he's quite tanky, as opposed to other supports who aren't necessarily. He can also regain mana by beating on people. Not that you really want to do that necessarily too much because you can end up pushing the lane. I'm just going to lock it onto Tarek for the time being so that I don't have to scroll around while I'm talking. Now, the principle behind Caitlyn Tarek is quite simple. You've got a lot of stun available and you can single target assassinate pretty much anyone in the bottom lane, assuming that your communication is good. And we will demonstrate this once we reach level 2. I did overreach somewhat here. I actually went for bit of level one ganking which was a little bit silly and as a result I ate quite a bit of damage there. It's not really a huge deal as you can see my setup at the bottom there I've got fairy charm I've got three health potions two wards and a mana pot and that is as about as supportive as you get. You take the fairy charm to get a nice early gold per five item in the form of philosopher's stone and it gives you a little bit of mana regen at the start which is always useful because you really don't want to be hitting on things. Tarek doesn't really hit on things all that much anyway he's a very chaste person. Now, our Nocturne screwed up. We're not really entirely sure how that happened. We're just going to ignore that and focus on the bottom lane for the time being. As I say, at level 1, you can't really do much. But once Caitlyn reaches level 2, you can start doing some pretty nasty combos. And the combo in question is this big stun combo between the two of you that involves using Dazzle for an initiation, then a stun, and then a trap while the target is stunned to apply another stun. So we're both now level 2, and really we want to be focusing on Sona right here. So I used the Clairvoyance to open this up quite nicely. Some damage being done there, and there's the first blood. Nice easy pickup, no problem at all for our AD carry. Skill order is very, very obvious here. Dazzle, you should only ever really take one rank in because it doesn't increase the stun time. It increases the damage, but that's about it. You're not there to do damage. That's not your priority. Shatter is really awesome because not only can you do damage, say, to finish someone off if they're going to get away, cause big AoE damage to creeps as well if you need to clear out a wave nice and easy and your AD carries either dead or back for items. And you get that armor aura which is really, really good. So that makes you tanky, and it makes your AD carry a bit tankier. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, now around this time in the game, which as you can see is around four minutes, you want to start dropping a ward here. Don't necessarily drop it on dragon because it's too early for dragon really to be taken. There's slightly under dragon there, so you can also cover this entrance or indeed exit from the jungle. So you've got good visibility there from a variety of different potential ganking spots. Okay, so they're getting a little bit close. I don't really know what I was doing there. Caitlyn was all the way back there, so that was a little bit foolish on my part. 
Now, in the meantime, everything's going pretty well in these other lanes. Jarvan versus Wukong really is no contest. Wukong doesn't have the damage to take Jarvan out. Jarvan is much, much better, in my opinion, in top lane. Okay, still on Tristana this time around. I could have probably done it, and should, in my opinion, have done it on Sona there. So that would have been more effective. That was a misjudgment on my part. I did take a lot of damage, but that, again, that's not really relevant. I've still got a health potion left, and, of course, I've taken a rank and imbue, so all is good there. That extra armor that I'm getting from Shatter will be really helpful, especially as I get through to level 4. I'll be prioritizing Shatter over everything else. Then, after that, as you can see, we actually did go for that nice and easy flash stun combination there. Probably could have avoided flashing, honestly. It did guarantee us the kill, but I could have maybe grabbed it otherwise. Maybe it wasn't worth it. I don't know. It got another kill for the AD carry, so Amar's going to be able to get some nice items initially. Now, Jarvan is also smartly warding at the top as well. Either that or it was Nocturne that did it. I really didn't notice one way or the other. But, of course, that means that he's just sitting there like an idiot and getting absolutely nothing out of that. All right. Now, can we gank the Sona? That's the question, I suppose. Sona has no mana, but this is quite low level to really be going for tower dives, so probably not. I'm just going to stick in lane. I'm under no real threat at this point. I know that... The jungler is at the top, so I don't have to worry about him. And really, any gank that comes in from, say, Tristana, also not worried about it. I have my Dazzle. I'm on my side. I can easily get out of there. They can't really do enough damage. So I'm not too concerned. So I'm going there. I have to assume that was for a ward, most likely. She's also going for a fairly similar build, except that we've been doing much, much better than she has. So she hasn't returned to get anything just yet. Right, I'm now officially out of potions, so this is kind of about the time I might want to go back, but I don't see any need at this point. And we can perhaps get another kill for the AD carry right here, who has already grabbed a second Dorman's Blade. There's the nice quick one, and then you see the follow-up with the Shatter right there will pretty much guarantee you the kill, because that's a nice little bit of extra damage. You got the stun locking right there from Caitlyn, and this is really one of the reasons why Caitlyn is considered to be an extremely good, perhaps the most powerful AD carry at the moment, particularly in this ELO. When properly supported, she can absolutely destroy, and it's very, very hard to get away. And if she feeds nicely, or indeed if she gets fed nicely in the early game, then all is good. We have an Amumu right here, but the Amumu barely has anything whatsoever. Baited out just a little bit, and then we can smack it to pieces. And that's another nice and easy kill there. And I will absorb the hit from the tower, I'm not really too worried about that. Uh, I can easily heal myself up. So as you can see, this is a very, very effective combination. And you might think, oh god, Karthus, don't worry. Carthus' ulti is not doing too much damage yet. Now, the reason why you should play a support, really, is because the standard setup in the current metagame is as follows. You've got a jungler, you go with sort of a tanky DPS solo top, and that can be an AD or it can be an AP, like, say, Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath is pretty much the definition of tanky DPS, whether or not he goes tanky build, or whether or not he goes AP build. He's going to be a bit tanky one way or the other because of his health and, of course, because of his... Excellent regeneration when he's farming creeps at the top. So he's difficult to dislodge from the lane. Now, generally speaking, your top will go with teleport. It's not 100% necessary all the time, but you'll find that a lot of them do. In this case, I don't believe our Jarvan did, but the Wukong didn't either, so it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Teleport, always nice for that. Reduces the amount of time that you're out of lane, which can be critical in a one versus one situation at the top. So you've got your jungler, you take an AP mid, Brand is extremely popular at the moment for that. Generally speaking, you'll also see Morgana get counterpicked quite a lot. So if there's, say, a Brand or a Vega, for instance, or an Annie, if you don't ban the Annie, which is very, very common at the CLO right now, then chances are they will pick Morgana as a nice little solid counter. Okay, so we're not too worried about that. We've managed to do good damage to Amumu so far. I've got plenty of mana, and we have Nocturne coming in as well. Really should have warded that jungle. That would have helped him out quite a bit. Nocturne's going to take some damage here, but can easily flash out. I flash as well to get the stun, and I really should have probably left that for Amar, but it's one of those situations where you wonder, is he going to get away? If he gets away, this is going to suck. So Amar wasn't too worried, and it actually gave me a blue as well, which was really advantageous for me. So I can be spamming heals, I can be spamming stuns, and I can also keep Radiance on quite a lot. We'll drive Tristana back right here so she's out of the lane, not gaining any experience whatsoever. And that also gives me the opportunity to ward the dragon. So all is good. 
you'll see that I'm warding an awful lot here. That is your role of support. You basically hold the team together. It's really as simple as that. You get the good heals, you get the gold per five items, you support your AD carry as much as possible, you provide excellent ward coverage. If you have a look at our ward coverage right now, I think it's actually a slightly overkill. I mean, this ward right here doesn't need to be there. I think that's about to run out quite soon anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And as you'll see, like the readings are not correct, I don't think. Yep, that's not even moving at the minute. That's just byproduct of the replay system. But our ward coverage is so good that there really is no possibility of a gank at this point. But our bottom lane is entirely secure, and we know that we can win every single time in the fights in the bottom. We've already proven that beyond a shadow of a doubt. And our team is currently 7 to nil. So this is going really, really well for everyone. The Jarvan is playing really, really well. And he doesn't really need to. I mean, the Wukong can't kill him. <laughs> It's just, and even the Wukong is actually going boots first and a Doran shield, whereas the Jarvan is going with what I would say would be the preferred build for the top at the moment, which would be to grab gold for five items. Now, Jarvan can get out of there without too much of a problem, and he baits him in for some interesting play with the Nocturne, as you can see. Oaten drives away, there's the Jarvan ult, and that should be a finisher up there, I would think, if they don't screw it up. And in the meantime, we're just farming down here. I think he actually let him get away, which is very, very unpleasant. Oh, well, never mind. Drove him out of the lane, so there's nothing too wrong with that. Uh, here comes the inevitable Karth Assault once again. I don't know what the HP of these guys is, because LOL Replay doesn't show it properly. So, that's a possibility. Quick stun, and that was a nice little bit of AoE damage, as you can very clearly see right there. And there's the snipe to take down Sona. If I'd actually followed up with that, I could have probably chased and stunned Tristana again, so I'm kind of kicking myself not for doing that. Pop the Radiance so that we can make our way through that nice and easy, and I can leave Radiance on for quite some time since I've still got blue buff, so everything is going incredibly well. Now, you might think, why would I want to play support? Well, the thing about support is that you get the knowledge that you basically win the game for your team if you play your support properly. Your clairvoyance can avoid ganks and can also enable them. Your wards will do the same thing. Your heals will help. Any kind of support buffs that you provide will be useful. You'll get a lot of gold because, generally speaking, you go for gold per five items. So you get a pretty constant income coming in, even if you're not getting any last hits. And you shouldn't really be taking last hits from your AD carry under any circumstances, unless the AD carry is either not there or can't get those last hits. And in this case, with Tarek particularly, you enable a ton of really cool kills and you get a lot of assists. Also, if you want to be really, really silly and you actually want to build a snowball item, then someone like Tarek is good to do that. And you'll see I've got, I think it's six assists. I can't quite see it behind my fraps counter there. And one kill. If I'd had a mage eyes at this point, then I would be probably on about six to eight stacks, depending on how things would go. Wukong and Mumu coming in. So we want to back off just a little bit. And this is a perfect opportunity to grab ourselves a dragon. And because of our ward coverage, we know exactly where they are and when they will arrive. There is really no way that they can get in here. Also, trap coverage really helps in that regard. That's why the Caitlyn Tarek lane is so good, because you've got wards and traps. There we go. That is a dragon for us, and now we can get a good solid engagement. And I'm sorry, but that Amumu is just pure squish. Really, really is. Now, we could try and grab the Wukong. Wukongs are always a little bit difficult to grab. Unless, of course, you happen to have a stunt, and then they kind of die. But I think we did screw that one up. Oh, well, never mind. I'm not sure what I stunned. Did I stun the Wukong there? I don't know. I think the snipe was actually on the wrong target. That's probably why the Wukong didn't die, but hey. Not too important. All is going well. We've still got 9-0. to zero. So you're not going to be getting kills as a support. It's as simple as that. That's not what a support is for. You really shouldn't be sniping them off. I believe these is... Uh, I might get another one, I think, before the end of this game, but... You shouldn't be actively going for them. If you pick them up as a result of auto attacks or whatever, it's fine. As long as you're not actively sniping them from your AD carry, then there really is no concern whatsoever. Our Caitlyn right now is 5 for 0, has a BF sword, has two Doran's blades, has boots 2. Boots 2 being the sort of slogan jargon term for upgraded boots of some form, one way or the other. Wukong... And Carthus in the middle. Nothing really going on there. But everything is going awesome down in bottom lane. And it's as a simple result 
of having a really nice combo that's got good communication on Ventrilo, and you can do this with your ranked. You take an AD carry and support, for instance, in bot lane, you can win the game. It's as simple as that. Your AD carry gets fed, you're golden. And your support makes it ever the more likely that that's going to happen. If you guys are on vent, then you can really swing things in your favor. So to me, it seems like going that combination and then going solo ranked, quote unquote, even though it's actually duo ranked, is a great way to get yourself out of ELO hell. And it's also fun as well. Laning with a friend is much more enjoyable than queuing solo. Hell, as far as I'm concerned, laning with a friend is even maybe more enjoyable than a full-on team engagement. Well... As you can see, that Amumu is not all that useful. Now I can go with a stun right here. There we go. Stun is off cooldown, so we'll just throw a stun at Tristana. Actually, really a shame I didn't go after that, but I was taking a lot of damage. The tower would have probably killed me, and if I'd run past that, I could have been hit by Karthus. Oh, wow. The first kill. There we go. It's 12 to 1 right here. Big messy team fight in the middle, but most of our guys survived. I'm actually very low on mana. I think I left my Radiance running. You've got to be kind of careful about that. The Sona decided to get clever. It wasn't clever. Tristana gets out of there, but are we concerned? No, we took middle tower. All is good. Quick heal. Try and support your team as best you can. Imbue should not really be too much of a priority for you as Tarek. Tarek is... His heal is just being nerfed into the ground. I mean, it doesn't do a lot anymore. There was the big support nerf, and Tarek got hit pretty hard with the nerf back. The cooldown on Tarek's heal was always ridiculous, and now it's even more so. So that is something to consider. But certainly, prioritize it over Dazzle. And there's no real point in taking high levels of Dazzle. I have actually seen jungle ganking Tarek, and it works really well. We actually have a guy who is part of our fixed team rotation who will go jungle Tarek, and... It is surprisingly good, mostly because Dazzle is such a good stun, and he will actually level up higher levels of Dazzle. He won't really take much heal at all, just enough to jungle with, and he just smacks down with Dazzle and then follows up with Shatter. It, it's really, really dangerous, and of course it can enable some great ganks. He's also a good chaser if he's got the right boots quite early. In the meantime, I'm just going to get some farm down here, because we're really not worried about this attack in the middle. It's, it's not going to do anything. It... If they overextend, then it's easy enough just to come down and destroy them. I get a nice little bit of farm down here. Your support does need money from time to time. Yeah, you've got two gold per five items, which is quite nice. But if you have an opportunity to clean up a lane that's actually being pushed, then go for it. Why not? Reset the line and then get back into a position where you can actually help out. Nothing is stopping you taking hits unless it is from an AD carry. It's the whole idea of being a little bit selfless. To me... Playing a support is kind of like being a sheltering soccer mom, I suppose you call it in America. I don't really know what you call it here. We don't really seem to have that, but it's the kind of thing where you you get glory by proxy. You live through your children, and your AD carry, as far as I'm concerned here, is your child. It's your duty to protect it, but you also get to live by proxy through your child's successes, and you get to try and help your child out. And that's exactly what happens. That's, as far as I'm concerned, what playing a support is like. And it's pretty satisfying in that regard. A lot of people don't play supports because, like, oh, I want to be solo top, I want to be the jungle, I want to be... And support is considered to be this weak role, and I don't believe that that's the case. Support is an extremely satisfying role if played properly. Ooh, that Nocturne. But there's the ace. That's... I don't even know what that Sona was thinking of, honestly. The, the Sona has not been playing all that well. And there's the quick Radiance to smash our way through there. Push all our way back up without too much of a problem. Still three of their guys are down, but we are pretty badly injured, and Karth Assault is a little bit of a problem right here. Ah, the Nocturne got a little bit cocky, but hey. You can get punished by Karth Assault quite easily in that respect. I want to be, and I'm going to start grabbing myself part of sort of Aegis of the Legion. If you're going to play support, of course, it's, it's a really, really good item for Tarek because, of course, it stacks with Shatter, so... You provide a ton of resistances in the middle of a team fight, and also you are quite tanky as a direct result. You can see right there my arm is 130, and as a direct result, I'm pretty tanky. I mean, I've almost got 2k HP at level 11. You can't really argue with that. You are not squishy at all like you would be with Sona or Soraka, for instance. That's why Tarek is, in my opinion, a really strong support at the moment, even after the nerf. And this combination with Caitlyn is absolutely perfect, simply because of the amount of stun locking you can do with it. I can think of a few other combos that would work quite well. For instance, Ash 
Dash would work all right. That means you've got a lot of slow, you've got a lot of damage, and of course, once you get level six, you've got arrow as well to screw them over, so you can time it and go either initiate with an arrow if you want to close up and then follow up with a dazzle for the double stun, or do it the other way around if you happen to get the opportunity. So you've got a lot of flexibility there for uh, good damage and, of course, good kill potential on the bottom line. Vayne, not bad, but again, she's reliant entirely on Tarek for stuns there, whereas Caitlyn has some stuns, and I think that's what you've really got to consider. That's why Caitlyn's so powerful in a lane with Tarek. It's so much stun. You almost force them to go Mercury Treads, and even then, they're going to get punished really, really hard for just being in the lane with these two. It's a good combo. I like it a lot. And the Surrender is coming, folks. There's no real doubt about that. It's 18 for 2. That is the Surrender, and hopefully you guys learned a little bit about support Tarek right there. Consider it as part of your duo rank combo. And remember, supports win games. I'll see you next time. Victory!